All right, okay, <laughs> after that, uh, I'd like to introduce Vinci Rufus. Uh, Vinci Rufus, um, actually he heads the e-commerce and usability practices uh, division at Neve Technologies. Uh, and he's been helping and building teams uh, build applications for about 12, 12 years now, for about 12 years. Uh, and he's actually, he actually started his career being uh, building flash games and other rich internet applications. Then he decided it's too, too many cents for one person, so he's moved on to JavaScript, I guess. He's passionate about front-end tech and usability and loves uh, dabbling in HTML5, CSS3 and JavaScript. He enjoys conducting workshops and speaking on topics related to front-end technologies. What he's going to talk about right now is motion detection in JavaScript for gesture-based interaction, no plugins involved. Take it away, Vinci. All yours. Houston, do you copy? Houston, do you copy me? Can you hear me? Yeah. Sure. Better now? Okay, yeah. So, don't be all the crap that he just said. So, uh, I'm going to be talking about motion detection. I'm trying to see how you can do that with uh, gesture-based animation. And uh, when I say gestures, that's not about your swipes, your pinches, your zooms. That's about standing about two or three feet away from your computer or your application and you know, doing something and continue controlling your application through that. And probably, hopefully, that's interesting. So before I get into that, an evolution in how we have been interacting with uh, computing devices. You obviously started off with your keyboards, right? So there was a time when you only used keyboard to interact with the computer. And then you moved on to your uh, mouse. So you had a mouse now, click on the mouse, you had a GUI, click on it, and you'd pass commands. And then the Apple guys came in, and your Apple guys said, hey, what, you can now swipe. You can swipe, you can pinch, you can zoom on your screen, and that passes commands. Great, so that was kind of an introduction to gestures. After Apple, your Samsung guys came in, said, hey guys, you don't need to touch, you just move your hand on top of it, and things happen. Great. Your Micromax probably came in, your Micromax came in and they said, no touch, no hand over the device. You blow onto the device, things happen, right? So people are really hooked onto gestures. And uh, I think two classic examples, your Xbox Connect, awesome things, right? People have gone crazy playing with that. You spend hours playing with it. Because you don't need anything. You just move your hands, legs, things work. Your smart TV, your smart Samsung smart TV. You don't have to run around hunting for a remote. Sit on a couch, move your hand, control the application. Gestures are really, really coming in. And if you look at gestures as such, at the end of the day, it's all about motion detection, right? I do something, there's a motion happening there, something detects that motion, and that fires some command. So ultimately, uh, gesture-based interactions boil down to uh, motion detection. And you're probably wondering, you're this guy talking about gestures, cameras, motion detection, and uh, you're at a JS4 conference, so most probably you're going to be working either with Flash, HTML, or JavaScript. Uh, Flash and Flex were really great earlier. You could do a lot of stuff with that. Unfortunately, that got killed by somebody. So you're stuck with HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. Till about a few years back, there was little that you could do with it. Thankfully, the WebRTC came in. That came in about two years back. I think two years back is when the project really started. And uh, now Google and Chrome, uh, obviously, uh, sorry, Firefox and your Chrome support that. And now with uh, WebRTC and your good old HTML5 canvas, you can start doing stuff. Can starting stuff with motion detection. A small intro to uh, what motion detection is and how you do gesture recognition, right? So according to Wikipedia, uh, there are two basic ways you could do that. Your first one is a machine vision. Machine vision is where uh, you're probably using infrared beams or you're using electrical signals or uh, some kind of capacitive signals and if you see a detection or you see a break in that, that triggers an event for a motion and fire some commands. That's a little uh, complex, you need some external hardware, you need some stuff for that. A much simpler way is image processing. In image processing, what you would do is, uh, you have a camera that's taking images, you take one image, take an image after a few seconds, compare those images, and if you saw some change, that's motion detection. Uh, that's my sweetie pie out there. So that's two different images. They look seemingly similar. When I superimpose them, you realize that uh, there's only a handshake happening there, right? So that's where motion detection is taking place. Visually, it's very easy for us. We know that, okay, there's a hand movement out there. 
that's motion detection happening on your hands. How do you tell that to a computer? That happens through a process called uh, a blend mode difference. I think a very fancy name for something as simple as uh, pixel color subtraction. So what we do over here is you've got two different images, right? You pick up a pixel from each of those images. You pick up your RBGA values of each of them. Uh, so you know that that's your RGBA. Uh, so that's uh, for that particular color pixel, that's 250, 240, uh, 240 192, and the alphas are about 100. So you pick up the RGBA values of these two pixels. You do a simple, plain simple subtraction. And whatever is your output, we use that. In an ideal scenario, if there was no motion detected, your pixels of the image in the first place and the previous image are the same. So the pixels are the same. And when you subtract that, your answer is zero. And if your answer is zero, if you pass that back to an RB, uh, RGBA canvas image, you'd get a black color. Oh, this doesn't look that great. So what I've tried to do over here is I did a pixel subtraction on the same image. I did an RBGA subtraction. And what was the output? I just pushed it back. So if you notice, the whole image is black. And only in the hand area where there's something happening, that's where motion detection is taking place. So that's, uh, that's basically how uh, motion detection works. I'm going to try and show a small example now. So using WebRTC, I invoke my camera. I give access to that. Over here, what I have are two simple canvas tags. You think that's better? Yeah, I think this can be better. OK. One last try. This way? Not sure. Is it OK? OK, you can live with it. So uh, I've got two canvases. The one on the left-hand side is streaming my uh, webcam as it is. The one on the right-hand side is where I'm doing the pixel subtraction. Now, if I stand straight, I don't shake anything. You see it turns black. The moment I start shaking something, there's a motion detection happening, right? Very, very simple. Simple pixel subtraction, and that's giving me motion detection. Now, if I use this motion detection, and I kind of create hotspots, and I say, if you detect motion in this certain area, trigger a certain event. So uh, I've done something on the top right corner. So if I move my hand to the top right corner, you see there's a motion detection happening, and that's showing something, right? So as simple as that. Uh, if you guys want to look at the code, extremely simple. I think that's the beauty of it, and probably that's also the reason why I'm able to explain this to you guys. It's really, really simple. So if you look at the HTML part, nothing else. I just got three elements, a video tag. I got two canvases. The first canvas is where I'm rendering the video as it is. The second canvas is where I do the blend. It's called the blend canvas, where I'm doing the subtraction. And the output of the subtraction is what I push over there. On the JavaScript side, I think it's a standard part of any HTML5 application that you would use with Canvas. Create the variables, I'm getting the context of the Canvas, getting the 2D context on it, saving them into variables. So since I've got two canvases, I'm doing it for the two variables. This is how uh, you invoke the camera or get the stream from it. It's a part of the WebRTC. Uh, it's one of the objects called the get user media. And that's, that's got three parameters to it. The first one is the condition where I say, if video is equal to true, then go to the function which says, got stream. And if you cannot get the video, video is equal to false, then go to a function that says, no stream. And probably in the no stream part, I'm going to say, sorry, no video available. But if I do get a, if I do get, a get stream, then I'm just going to pass the stream on uh, to a source variable. So that's the function over there. And this is the one the subtraction is taking place. Again, a very simple function. I call it a check diff. Takes in three parameters. 
the data for my source image, the data of the previous image, and an output object. And if you see here, I take the average of the first image, take the average of the second image, and I'm just subtracting them all out. So I create a variable called diff, average one minus average two. And whatever is the average, I'm just passing them back to my output as its respective RGBA. You probably might have some questions on why there's a number four coming in over there. I'll probably address that later. So by the end of it, I'm just picking up those pixel values, picking up the RBGA, averaging it out, because I don't want to do that at every pixel level, right? So I'll just, end of the day, I just need to know if the answer is zero, great. If it's not, then there's a motion detection. So I just sum them up, average it, subtract them out. This is the function where I check for the hotspot. So if you remember on the top right left corner is where I created a hotspot. So I get the pixel for uh, the top 00, 0, 50, 50, run that into a loop, and whatever is the RGBA for that, I pick them up, I sum, up, sum it up, and then I check if uh, the average of that is greater than 10. Now I do, why I do the 10 is because if I really keep it accurate, uh, every small change, any minute detection is going to trigger an event. So rather than that, I want to capture only uh, significant motion detections. So that's the reason I'm using a variable of uh, a number 10. So any detection where the value is greater than 10, that's going to trigger a motion. And just HTML, I pass out a message saying, if the average is greater than 10, put this message. If not, put the other message. So it's as simple as that. So the function, uh, the application that I showed you, was something like that. Now, using the same uh, concept, you can probably go and build in some demos. So here are two demos that we worked with. I'm going to try and show you uh, one of them. OK, let me see if I can do this right. Uh, you guys go to your uh, mantra.com, uh, jabongs.com, write any new buy addresses. How nice it would have been had you guys could do a virtual trial room. You go there, check how your dress looks like. If you like it, then purchase it. So trying to do that. On the uh, right-hand side, there are, did the resolution just change? Wow. OK. OK, let's try this. So blue shirt, uh, not that great. Looks better? Which one? As simple as that. Maybe I could take it a step further and say, if I like this, move my hand this side, and then that takes an image of that. And I could probably post that image on Facebook or Twitter or something like that. Uh, so that's one example. The other thing uh, which came out of this was, one second. I'll close this. Yeah, this was the other one. Uh, so my guys in office did some, we had a hackathon event, right? And so a bunch of guys sat late night over a Saturday, Sunday, and they tried and did something with WebGL, 3JS, and your motion detection. So what they did is try and control a car in 3D without, so I'm standing here, move left, move right, and I stop. Go front. On. So it's as simple as that. The same, uh, yeah, reverse. Okay, I don't know. So maybe there's a guy you can talk to. So this this demo exact actually was uh, done by done by a bunch of these guys. So the guy in the blue shirt is Piyush. You want to get up and say hi? So he's one of the guys who did that. So yeah, that questions can be directed to him. Yeah, so I'm done. Uh, that's about it. And yeah, my final slide. In true Bollywood style, yeah, this is not the end, but I think this is the beginning of how you could try and use uh, gestures in all your applications. The concept is very simple. It's about <laughs> so it's about being creative and trying to use it in different ways. So uh, this was one of the most cool demos using the uh, features of uh, I'm Get sorry, could you just stand? Uh, okay, thank you. See me? So uh, I just wanted to know this. Uh, uh, 
how are you doing this at JavaScript level? Like, for example, if you want to um, detect the motion, there has to be a function which is running on, on an interval, right? So exactly. Uh, that is that not a performance issue, or have you checked the memory profile page wherein you're getting memory peaks when you want to detect a motion? Because see, a lot of uh, subtraction you're doing, um, the RGB subtraction. Exactly. So if you're not, I mean, if you're doing all that in the same thread, that's very uh, highly performance intensive, right? Exactly. So what are you doing for that? Yes, so you'll have to start playing with it. Uh, this things change from uh, application to application. Okay. So I do have a uh, for request animation function that's running and it's triggering it, running at about 50, uh, 60 frames per second. Now, depending on the kind of canvas that you're capturing, you'd probably decide if you, uh, if you're just picking each and every pixel, you would probably skip a couple of pixels. You know, if you look at my function which says uh, get RBG values, I was using a multiplicator of four. So instead of using four, you might use eight or ten, so that the number of variables that come in are less. Instead, of, you don't need to detect every single pixel. You might need to take a group of pixels. So you need to start playing with those two functions, either from a hot pot, the hotspots perspective or from that uh, check difference function. Uh, you have to play with it. But then, yes, you're, the bigger the canvas, the bigger the pix number of pixels that you're reading, that's going to be a problem. So uh, one of the things that a lot of computer vision libraries do is that you really don't really need to use 32-bit information on every pixel. And that's one of the things you did. You took an average instead, right? Yeah. And that reduces to 8-bit. Exactly. Uh, do you think we probably need uh, this, uh, maybe something like this in the browser, hardware accelerated in a uh, separate thread? So you can say, give me this canvas, but only 8-bit image. Uh, give me either a colored 8-bit image, where like 256 colors, or grayscale. So I can do analysis much uh, faster and much better. Um, uh, yes, I think that's a good idea. I think you should be able to do that. Uh, I think once you have the data, you can pass it to a web worker and it can analyze the way it wants. Right. But then you're necessarily not doing anything in the main thread. Right. Then the browser gives you the data and you run everything in a worker. True. But my only concern with that would be if I'm taking a grayscale image and I'm trying to do a subtraction, right? If I, uh, because I'm taking this full image and when I do an RGBA subtraction, if there's a change in my R, G, or the B, it's going to detect that. Yeah, so you, you don't always not. have to do grayscale. 8-bit doesn't always mean right. grayscale. It could be 2 to 6 colors as well. So, so yes, that's one of the things that, that's a performance thing that's employed in a lot of uh, computer vision libraries. That's true. Exactly. Question, yeah? Sure, please. I wanted to know how is it different from image stabilization? Like image? Uh, image stabilization, are we using the same principles detecting a motion sensitivity and doing a stabilization? Like a lot of cameras, right? They actually yes. Uh, oh, I wouldn't know that how it works on cameras. I mean, I'm using the canvas out here, so I just pull the stream, the stream, and put it into the canvas. But then, yeah, I what I didn't show was some functions where I'm using a threshold value where any any color pixels that are greater than say uh, 50 or 60 are negated out. They're either converted to a black or a white. If you saw the video, it was either black or white. You didn't have any gray scales or any other colors. That's because anything greater than a certain limit was converted either to a black pixel or a white pixel. So, I mean, I was using that, but that still doesn't answer your question right now. All right, ladies and gentlemen, big round of applause for Vinci Rufus. Blow the roof off.